Hi, good morning to Relax and Paint with Donna. I am the creator of the One Stroke Painting Technique, and you know, I have seven children, and I taught myself at my, at my dining room table how to paint, and I didn't know what terminology was or um, actually any part of the brush, but <clears throat> you know, the necessity I felt that I had to learn how to paint was pretty um pretty much drove me to paint and i loved it so much and i love sharing and i became passionate about teaching and you know what i um probably am not the best i'm sure i'm not the best painter you've ever seen in the world but i create quick and easy ways that many of us can be very good artists and what I, because of my necessity, it was to learn um, how to paint so I could decorate my house prayer or I could make gifts to save money that I didn't have to buy with seven children. <laughs> I would paint cute clothes. I would paint um, things to sell at the craft fairs. And as I was selling at the craft fairs, my favorite thing was to see people like what I created. So I hope if I share one little thing with you, it might bring out that creativity in you that you feel you would love to learn, but you're not really sure that you could ever do it. And I have millions of people around the world that are painting, one stroke painting with me and love the step-by-step -step simple process. And I'm excited to be with you this morning. Thank you for coming on. And no matter what time you're watching this, I inspire you to think about it during the day and find a special time for you. You have talent. We're all blessed with God's given talents. We need to find what those talents are and what makes us happy. There's a lot of stress in the world, but doing something when we're creating is a positive, good feeling, right? Thank you for watching. Pray that you'll share with your friends and we'll build the Donna Debris channel so I'll have more time to spend sharing more lessons with you. Okay? So thank you very much. You can always go to onestroke.com and pick up a lot of the painting supplies I use. But I just want to share with you um, what inspires me. And there's full-length lessons you can get on there on my monster.com they're downloadable but i'm going to do more and more here also okay so let's start painting today is dogwood today is um by popular demand <laughs> so i'm going by the request from my audience and i'm going to be listing those and trying to share those with you as you let me know what you really want to learn okay I've had people say water lily and other landscapes and many other flowers. So I am going today to do a dogwood. All right. So let's get started. I'm going to go to the overhead camera and I'm going to bring it over to where I'm working. And I'm going to be on my, my art pad and what I'm using are my one stroke brushes that my handles are never clean because I've always got paint on me. <clears throat> but I want to share with you a really quick, let me turn it sideways maybe. Very quick and easy. Here's my double loader. I'm going to use, these are multi-surface, which means they go on all kinds of surface. So it's folk art, uh, folk art multi-surface, which means exactly what it says. It has a sealer in there, so you can use it outdoors, indoors, on, on glass, ceramic, wood, and I put it on fabric and all kinds of places. So I'm using my 12 flat, and I'm going to split this brush my flat brush and I dampen it. I've laid the brush on a paper towel and then I pick up paint. All right, then I work it in. I'm gonna pick up more paint and work it in right into an empty space. You notice I don't split it again. I can move this over and there's the third step. All right, 
Now in the middle, there's a liquid called floating medium. All right, and that's what I use instead of water. All right, and then I can pick up a little bit of white and then I'm gonna come right here and work that in. Okay, now what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna make a branch. Now I'm, I'm gonna stand this brush up and I'm leading with the lighter color. And I can also turn the brush around and lead with a darker color and leave a light branchy branch showing because I'm on black. You want the lighter color to show. So dark brown's not gonna show as good up, show as well on black. So I flip the brush over and look, I keep picking up from this little location. All right, so so you lead whatever follows is going to be your prominent color. So because I'm on dark, I'm leading with the dark. And this is just a a dogwood branch, just because I want to show you how to do those flowers. And before we do the leaves, I'm going to do this. I'm actually going to do a bigger flower. They're actually small, but I want to pick up white. And usually I double load right over here, but I'm going to come here because I just want, I want to side load a teeny bit of pink. Work that in. Okay, just a teeny bit. All right, so see, I am working this all into the brush, pushing really hard. Then I'm, I'm, I'm decreasing the pressure. Okay, so we're just gonna have a pink shade. All right, so we're gonna have four, let me come over here more. We're gonna have four petals. So I'm gonna go from here to here. And let's kind of make a square there or an X. All right, so I'm gonna push down. This is a 16 flat. I'm gonna make a dimple and come back up here. Now I'm gonna come right back here to the color I need. Okay, I've got too much of a glare. Let's see if that helps. All right, so I'm gonna start here again. Let's see. A little bit too bright. There we go. Let's see. More white. So what you wanna do is you wanna get this dimple and it's kind of like a heart shape. Do you see that? Making sure I come down and do that dimple. I think because I've got so much white and then this black. It is really glowing. Okay, so we have four strokes there. a little bit let me go another one let's make a more pink shade so watch how i'm doing this i'm getting the white i'm coming right here to pick up and then i'm working that in all right oh it's blurry now there we go all right so do the dimple let me come down this is more of a pink stroke up, little dimple, okay. There we go. All right, so now one of the things that happens, I think that pink one shows a little bit better for us with our color. The one thing that can happen here is I'm going to come up here and do a couple of 
side view strokes. So I have one in the back, one in front. See that? Now I also can come here and push down and have buds. Let's put a few little buds in here. Okay, so did you see me do this? All I'm doing is I'm pushing down on the chisel and standing up. Just enough pressure to get some pink in there. And I, I usually put two strokes with the second one on top. So it looks like a bud that's opening up. All right, let's do that. I just really want you to see that stroke. So it's from here to here. So I push down, over, make a little dimple, and stand back up. All right. And I usually do them pretty much white, but I want you all to see it better. So I'm doing a pinker one. This is a 16. I usually use a 12, but I'm trying to do it large enough for you guys to see well. Okay. So since I did it larger, uh, I'm going to get, um, I need to get a two because of the size I use. Or a six, let's use a six. Now there's a couple of things I can do here. I can take a little bit of medium and side stroke a little bit of burnt umber. Just a little bit. And I can go on this side of it right here and get a little bit of dark brown there. Okay, just on that tip. But what I'd probably do on the all white one is I would come right in here and really give this accent right there. So let's put the pink over here and over here. So this is apple red. All right, so see how it gives this little nice looking shape there. Now what I want to do is I don't want it to be that wide. All right, so I'm going to go back and get some more red. And just put it right there. Okay, now let's try a little bit of brown since this is so red. All right, we want to do a little bit of the brown in there. Because I don't think you're going to see anything else if I don't do that. See the little bits of brown? So you want it all up in from, from uh, where are we, right here. So I'm going to have brown start up there. I want just the edge. This is a six flat because I can lay it down and get it dark right there. So it just looks like... Um, a little bit like it's burnt on the edge right there. Sometimes you'll see leaves that look like that. Look, just a little bit. So I can take a little bit of the red and a little bit of the burn number. Pick up red, put some burn number, and kind of get both colors. And it's only on this edge, which kind of looks like, it, I told you, like it's burnt or pinched. Sometimes you'll see pretty fall leaves that have that look. And one little, um, I've seen they paint a lot of apple leaves that have that. So see when I've got too much there, I'm gonna go to the water, wipe it off, come back here and move that paint. Now, if I had more medium, which I didn't have as much medium, I could have gotten that off there in another way. Okay, so. Now, one of the things I do um, with my liner is I'm, I like to come in here and do some multiple little centers. 
and you can make these look super realistic depending on if I put dark first and let's say if I put a dark base so I'm dip dotting, dotting with the handle then I'm going to come in with the yellow the citrus green and put our little dots on top now I have used brown before as citrus green but see by having that dark it kind of sets it and this doesn't have the dark so I'm going to come here and just put a little bit more there just to make you have a center well now I can let this all dry and I can come back to the centers but see this is looking pretty realistic <clears throat> but I can come with a couple of things I can get an inky white see I put the water there that green is just a piece of dry paint sorry see that roll the brush all right now I can try this out I'm going to wipe it over here a little, a little bit to get some of it off and now see my finger steadying me I'm going to grab this and let me get kind of a little bit closer so I can just take a little bit of white liner see the little accents let's tilt it up like this you gotta pull from the center okay oh I got two wild hairs on here <laughs> Okay, so like if I'm right here, so you can put those accents in it or you can have none. And see white on white you can even you can still see it all right so on this one it looks like it needs a little bit something more okay so on this one I can go back to this tan the coffee latte right here where we did the branches let's, let's roll it roll it Okay, so I can come in here. Still not good enough. Let me go get some brown. See right here? Make it inky. I'm not using this for very much double loading, am I? <laughs> okay, so watch. We have a little bit darker in here. And we can put, I can put just a teeny bit of green. You can decide what you want to do, but see, I can come in here. I can float this in after everything dries, or I can come in here and do some of that shading now while it's all wet. But I still like to come back in and add some white on top of that so it really stands out. So dogwood's fun. And all you have to do to really make it look like dogwood is have that great looking dimple. Yeah, I can come back around and add stronger white here. I can also, if you're looking at this, I can put some white underneath too just to give it more dimension all right so let's put a couple leaves on there and then let you guys go practice some all right so <clears throat> let's get the double loader again we're going to pick up two colors work it in citrus green sap green citrus green and sap green 
and I'm doing half and half. I want to go dip some white. Come here and work that in. Because I'm on the dark, I'd like to see a little bit of that light. Okay, so I'm going to grab my buds. Pull them back. I'm going to grab this guy and make it part of this. This one can look like it's on, on top of there. Okay, so you can have some of these as buds coming out. You see that? So I'm leading with the dark and I'm just putting a couple little greenery, little bit of pieces there. All right, just a few. All right, then I can start doing a few little leaves that come up here. Now watch this. A little bit of a, a stroke. Let's turn it around here. All right, and we pull a stem right into it. All right, a little bit bigger. Right here. And I'm going to pull from the stem into my leaf. <clears throat> Alright, that's with the light edge. And that's with the dark edge out. So it kind of gives you, looks like the depth in the middle there, without even working hard for it. So... And if you don't like something, look, I can stroke right over it and then re-pull the stem. All right, so one more time. We can wiggle up and then wiggle back. Pull a little stem and you have a little leaf. Remember what I did here, I just pushed and lift. Every time I go back over here, look at this. This is my loading area. I just pick up fresh paint. And I can go right in here. All right. Let's do one more leaf here. On one side. All right, so look, I'm right here. I'm going to just shift this over. I'm just going from here to here. All right, so I was trying to do that upside down. Let's turn it this way a little bit. All right. There we go. So it already pre-shades it for you. And you don't have to come in and shade more. And see that dried up a little bit on this black? So look. Okay, and just restroke it. Look how pretty. Has a bright, pretty look. Okay, so there's my dogwood. Simple strokes. And if you were out there asking for dogwood, tell me what you think. That's the one stroke way. Is blending, shading, and highlighting in each stroke. And getting this pretty floral nature look quick and easy use little brushes for smaller ones but we want to have some of those tapering down so see how that turns that whole look okay so i could paint a few more leaves but that gives you the idea hope you enjoy it when this is all dry i Oh, it's dry. I'll do it real quick. I'm going to float just a little bit of berry wine, or it was red, wasn't it? So I got medium, and I have the brown and the apple red. Brown umber and apple red at the same time. Makes it look a little bit like berry wine. Okay, so look, 
I can come right around here and darken right against the stamens. And it just makes it look deeper, richer, a little bit more artistic. There we go. All right. So we put a dark green with a little bit of white back in there. We have this one with the deepness down around the center. And we have bright ones there. Okay. Hope you enjoyed. Till I see you next time. Let us know if you like it, share it, and ask for more. Okay, thank you.